Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. And in today's video, I've never actually done this before. And I was planning to do it when they released the final of, let's say, the initial mythicals, right? Because we don't have an undead horde mythical as of yet. But considering that we've got the portal lit up red and we've got, you know, the best event there has been so far for Primal Shards. And I've seen a lot of people, a lot of people getting uh, their, their mythical champions. I mean, I got a five star. I finished it off. I got the five star Arman Soul. Um, you can watch the Shard Pull session yesterday to see how it went. Uh, but a lot of people got their first mythicals, it seems like, this weekend. So I thought, let's go and rank them and talk about which one uh, we think or what, what, how I would put them. Yeah, where I would rank them. So let's do it. I mean, I think the tiers are going to be, well, somewhat self-explanatory. We've got S, which are like just absolutely insanely OP, blow your mind. A, which are incredibly powerful. Um, I think one of the differences when it comes to the A tier is that generally they, they, they might not have both forms be as useful. Maybe one form is more useful than the other one. Uh, whereas S tier, they tend to be really powerful in both. You'll see. B tier is like, you know, they're 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 pretty decent, um, but they're they're not amazing, but they have a use. And then C tier will be, they may not be that useful for you at all. And then D is like absolute trash, don't build. Um, I'm not gonna be putting, I think, anything into the D tier that's absolute trash, don't build. I think that all of these are supposed to be incredibly powerful. That being said, I will be putting some into the C tier. So let's dive into it. C tier. Pretty simple and straightforward. This is the tier where, you know, they, they they might not make that big of an impact on your account. Possibly they might be great. Possibly they might not be that good at all. These are the champions that you pull and you go, oh, oh, I got that one. Well, that's not what I wanted at all. So <clears throat> the first one I'm going to put in there, I think probably the worst mythical, I think is probably Aphidus. Aphidus is going in here. The Dark Elf mythical. Uh, I, I tried him out. Wasn't super impressed, right? So in his base form... Uh, he's doing, uh, he, well, number one, he can place AoE burns and give your team increased attack and extend debuffs. You know, it's, it's sorry, no, this is just an AoE increased attack and increases enemy debuffs. His other move is an AoE burn that will activate burns as well. Uh, his A1 can put out Veil. He does stack up his damage a good bit, which is nice, and he's got okay uh, offensive stats. But yeah, I found his base form. You know, it's decent for Hydra, but he does have affinity issues. Um... Yeah, he's a little bit awkward, like you won't necessarily have the increase attacks. You're going to activate the burn first and then do the increase attack. Uh, it can easily happen that you don't have the burns out. I don't know. I found him a bit awkward in his form too. Uh, it's kind of interesting, like he can put out weekends and he can stun. He gets quite tanky. Uh, he does have a AoE provoke on a three turn that buffs up himself and the team a bit. He has an AoE stun with continuous heals. Uh, if no stuns were placed by this skill, kind of wonky. And then... I don't know, like, I feel like, I feel like he's supposed to sort of be a Hydra champion, right? Do damage in form one, and then if you need to heal up your team, or you need to, you know, provoke, you've got this. Maybe his second form is a bit better for wave-based content. You've got an AoE provoke, and you've got an AoE stun, both on three turn cooldowns. Like, that's pretty good. But yeah, he, he doesn't seem like he's good in arena for me. Yeah, I... Uh, uh, yeah, I think the reviews are pretty poor. <laughs> you guys seem to agree. Like, I just don't know where he shines. I think that he seems designed for Hydra, but he's not great. So Aphidus for me goes in the C tier. Definitely he'd be my least wanted one. Another champion I'm going to put in the C tier is Fralni for the Dwarves. Now, I do think Fralni is better. Uh, Fralni, again, he may may not be... Like, Aphidus, he might be decent for one of your Hydra teams, or you might not use him at all. Frawley might be decent for you in Arena, or you might not use him at all. I think that's really what he's designed for. His passive is very strong. Whenever he kills an enemy, he gets a massive stacking max HP and massive stacking speed. He gets so much stats, but you need to be killing people. So this is, you know, fine for wave-based content, though it resets every round. Arena is really where this seems to be good. You know, like, he's quite good against that, say, Sun Wukong. He's the right affinity. You start killing the Sun Wukong, and... Sun Wukong so squishy, you got lots of stats, for instance. You know, that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, he's got an AoE. Ran hits hard. He's got a single target. You know, hits fairly hard. He ignores defense in his A1, so that hits pretty hard as well if you've got a lot of buffs. So yeah, he, he does decent damage, but it's not the craziest damage in the game by any means. You know, like I would say, White King Narcis out of the box is going to be more useful with his utility. Uh, Taris is obviously better as well in terms of the HP nukers. In his form too, then, it's very different. He's sort of a tanky champion. Put out ally protection. 
a shield on allies, but only if it's less if they're less than 50% HP, which is a bit awkward. Um, he can heal himself up and equalize HP with your team. I don't know. I, I just feel like this guy, he's not super useful, honestly. I feel like he's you put him into arena and he's a decent nuker in form one, a, a decent team protector in form two, but he's not blowing me away. How are the reviews? Yeah, again, the reviews are sort of middling for him. I feel like he's mostly for arena. And uh, yeah, again, I think C tier. I think, you know, he might be good for you. Like, I've got a six star frolling soul. I'd probably use him with a six star soul. That's so many stats. I'd be kind of mad not to. I'd actually, for me, I'd like to get him because I've got that soul. But like, if I didn't have a frolny soul, I'd be very disappointed, honestly, if I pulled frolny. Next up, we've got the B tier. That's all I'm putting into C. That's all for C. These are champions that are pretty underwhelming. B tier, these are champions that are not crazy strong. Uh, but they do have a little bit of a niche. The next one, I, I, I've i seen people more positive about him. I, I'm kind of a little bit negative about this champion, honestly. And that's Androk. I'm putting Androk in the B tier. I, I, I don't know. I, am, uh, I have mixed feelings. Androk, he has an interesting kit. Sort of reverses, of his, reverses his abilities in his other forms, right? So he comes in with increased resist, strengthen, and a heal. Even additional heals. Uh, his A2 is an AoE that increases ally buffs and heals them. His A1 is actually really nice. Increased defense on everyone for a turn. It's only one turn, but still. He gets bonus resist for every buff and every ally. And this is nice. Every crit inflicted by allies fills a turn meter of all your team by 5%, which is nice. So he's like, in Form 1, he's like a super tank. Um, the problem for me is like, where is this super useful? I guess he's, he's, he's a pretty solid team protector in Arena. Um... Uh, but yeah, I don't know. And then in his form two, he does get bonus accuracy. And this is what also makes him a little bit awkward for me. He gets accuracy for every buff on each enemy. And he does come in with a full buff strip. You can even do damage based off that, though it can't crit and it puts out block buffs. In order for you to actually strip buffs off the enemy reliably in Arena, you kind of want to build quite a lot of accuracy. He's getting some from this passive, but not a lot. So if you build him with accuracy for form two, I feel like you're kind of impacting form one where you would want to be building him with actually probably just lots of resistance, right? And lots of HP and, you know, just making him super tanky. Um, so that to me is a little bit awkward. His A2 is really strong. AoE, decrease resist, weaken and enfeeble. Uh, if they're less than 50% HP, it cannot be removed. This So this has been nerfed. Right, Enfeeble from him, what, I think it actually currently still is working on bosses, so you can use this absolutely smash Hydra, for instance, but uh, this is being fixed, or nerfed, fixed, let's say, either, it doesn't matter, semantics, it's being nerfed to no longer work, uh, I think in the next patch, like very, very soon, it's on the cart, they've already told us it is being nerfed, it's not intended to work like this, so yeah, they're, they're stopping it working against all bosses, which is a bummer, because that was very strong, um, but it's a great move for Arena, a little bit awkward again you gotta strip their buffs off or have them not have blocked debuffs then get this on and they don't have a cleanse i don't know where increased resistance is use decreased resistance i feel is not very useful unfortunately there's not many many places where it's useful is a1 is good chance to put 50 percent only but decreased defense aoe that's quite nice i don't know i'm not super convinced by him he's got a lot going on in his kit he's got like crazy big crazy good base stats but I just feel like he's a bit awkward. Like, do we actually build him for damage? Like, I don't know. I, I don't really think he's worth building him for damage. So the massive base defense isn't even super helpful. Um, I, I don't know. He's a weird one. I, I know some people really like him. I, I'm on the fence, very much on the fence by Androk. Next up in the B tier, a champion I actually, I, I really like. I think this champion I like. Uh, but I think they're probably sort of B. Um, I, I'm going to put Mezumel Looperfang in there. I, I like Mezumel. I think Mezumel is cool. Uh, I think that they're not crazy powerful, which is why they're in B, but they're solid. They are solid. So Mezumel comes in self buffs, which is nice with an extra turn, and then has a double hitter that ignores defensive buffs and puts block revive. She doesn't hit the hardest in the game, but look, it's a reliable self buff with a reliable, well, fairly reliable block revive. That's pretty powerful, right? That's a good niche to have for Arena. She's definitely useful. I definitely have seen her picked against me, and it's uh, you know been a challenge to deal with. The decreased defense on the A1 is solid as well. Um, gives her revive on death whenever she kills an enemy is somewhat useful and not super, super impressive, but it's okay. The heal is nice, so pretty cool. Then in Form 2, she's AoE damage, right? So this is just a damage champion. Very little in terms of defensiveness built into this kit. Yeah, a bit of self-healing, but that's it. 
gets boosted stats while in the alternate form, got an AoE that can put out True Fear, and then uh, an A1 that can do an extra hit against enemies under True Fear. Quite difficult to actually, again, land the True Fear and get that to trigger. You're not building accuracy on this champion. It will work against damage dealers, but not really against any tanky champs that will have more resistance than she can deal with, really. I mean, she ignores 20%, but still. Um, not triggering counterattacks is quite nice as well, right? Because there are some, like, Taris Marishka, very powerful counterattack champs in the game. So, yeah, I I think she's not crazy powerful, but you've got a good single target nuke with Block Revive, a solid AoE damage champion. They're squishy, but solid. So I, I like Mesomel the best out of these so far. I think it's the most solid kit. Not overpowered, but gets the job done, basically. And that, for me, I think is it for the B tier as well. We'll rearrange these at the end. I'll think about it. Um, after that, where do we go after that? We go into the A tier and the S tier. And this is where champions, I think, get really powerful. I think Carnage, this one is hard to judge because we've literally seen no gameplay. Carnage, I'm a bit skeptical about as well. It's a bit of the... Um, <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of like Androck. That's how I feel about Carnage. Like, really super power loaded kit but how useful is it carnage is just massive damage he has a crazy arena aura i think he hits really hard his first form is all about single target damage and he can debuff spread and stuff like that yeah he can debuff spread then when he goes into form two form two i mean this is where maybe i'm under ranking him because he has he has almost 2000 base attack which is crazy um and he gets crit damage the more accuracy he has and he ignores he's it's all about debuffs really but in this form too, he's got a massive AoE. Um, he actually has two massive AoEs. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm underranking him a bit, but look, two massive AoEs, a great speed aura. You can swap into his AoE form, which is powerful, right? You get locked out. Bam, I still got my AoE form. But he is sort of dependent on debuffs. That's where some of his power comes from, right? If they're under three debuffs, block revive. I mean, that's really good. Really good. And it's probably going to hit really hard. But are they going to be under three debuffs? Um... I'm not sure. Ignore stuff when attacking enemies under a certain amount of debuffs. Debuffs are just not super meta. Uh, so I don't know. He'll be an absolute monster for PvE. Like, I mean, maybe he's just insane for Hydra, you know? He just comes in with AoEs and just does crazy damage, perhaps. So perhaps he will move up the tier. I think A tier is fine for now. Of being like, yeah, okay, really powerful. Guy hits like a truck, but maybe a bit awkward to use the debuff stuff. Certainly in Arena, which seems to be with his aura, where he's mostly designed for. But I think he's really good. We might rearrange this, this tier as we go, these last few tiers. Next up in the A tier, I'm going to put Garol. Uh, I think Garol, similarly, is actually very good in Hydra. Uh, the problem I have, the reason I'm not putting Garol in the S tier is I think Form 1 is not that amazing, right? Form 1 is kind of tanky, and that's fine. Um, I think Garol just sort of sits there and switches to Form 2. I feel like Form 1 is just a vessel to get to Form 2. Like, you got an AoE Provoke, sure. Um, you've got, you know, a bit of a cleanse and ally protection and, and shielding and stuff. I almost never see people actually really use Form 1 much. Form 1 just sits there, and then you flip on over to Form 2. So that, for me, is a mark against Garol. Form 1, not that great. Form 2, though, is a monster. You got an AoE here that does more damage for every buff in the champion and ignores defense. And the A1 is a 20% chance to repeat the attack. The passive, whenever an ally attacks, 25% chance to join in. And then a Leorius style passive, where the lower the HP, the harder this champion hits. Garol can do just crazy damage, right? Crazy damage in Arena, crazy damage in Hydra, especially like the passive is just nuts. Huge, huge, huge potential. Um, so I'm putting Garol in the A tier again exceptionally strong champion really strong but it's really seems to be all about form two basically uh so yeah i'm putting garol in there mm, now we're running into some tough spots um let's put in our base actually probably put our base is maybe a little less useful than garol yeah probably but our base for me goes in the a tier i i personally rated our base as the initial when they had the initial five of these which yeah actually uh, are they all there the, that was initial, initial. Yeah, I think of the the initial ones and these these ones. Yeah, Siegfried got buffed. Siegfried previously would have been rated pretty poorly, but obviously not anymore. Uh, I had rated our base the highest, uh, but Garol I think maybe is slightly better. But our base is really good. I really like our base. Um, yeah, twenty five percent speed in all battles aura is great. Uh, but comes in, you've got the big turn meter boost for increased attack, increased accuracy. So sort of like a better arbiter move. It's kind of similar to arbiter, right? Then you've got uh. Buff strip off all enemies, increasing ally buffs and revive on death on everyone. Again, a really nice move. 
uh, AoE block active skills. You got a solid form one. You can even petrify enemies when uh, they attack someone under revive on death. Pretty solid. Again, it's sort of form one is sort of like you don't have the revive of Arbiter, but you've got the revive on death. Very similar. It's sort of like a better Arbiter in some ways, but minus having a revive. Then form two, I think, is really nice as well because you get uh, healing for your team. Two turn taunt and a one turn stone skin. It becomes very difficult, actually. It's a really, really good team protection. She's sort of like an ultimate death knight in form two in a lot of ways, right? That two turn taunt is, is great. Not up the whole time, but hopefully up long enough to make a big difference. And she's good affinity as well against Rotus, so she can be very strong. And unlike ultimate death knight, she's providing you with a really useful aura and a whole bunch of extra stuff. Her A2 is an A with HP burn and leech. Solid enough. And then the A1 decreases term meter by 30%, which is quite nice, and puts out some heals. Um, can put out decreased speed on enemies as well, and decreases damage by allies, or taken by allies by 20%. I feel like she's, you know, especially if Ultimate Death Knight ever gets nerfed, she's sort of like, she's very like Ultimate Death Knight. So it's sort of like a, a pseudo Arbiter plus a pseudo Ultimate Death Knight in one champion. I think our base is, is really solid. I've been impressed with her. Uh, actually so yeah she was the one that impressed me the most out of the initial set of of mythicals like i said but that being said garol form 2 is kind of so nuts uh, i will rate garol slightly higher but yeah they're a tier they're both super super duper good next up mm, you know what let's be controversial i'm not a big fan of his form 2 i'm gonna put alaz the sun bearer up here this one this i'm not entirely sure about this one to be honest his form one is so insane, right? So insane. You've got a two turn provoke, single target, really nice. Team counterattack and team block damage on a three turn. Two turns counterattack, one turn block damage. What a move. His A2 is crazy as well. Increased defense in your team, and then it's an AoE that can double hit, sort of like, um, um, was it Hefrak? If they're less than half HP, he hits them twice. Uh, this move absolutely smacks as well. Then his A1 just, you know, it hits pretty hard. And he's ramping up his defense as well to hit harder and harder, which is really good. Defense in all battles, aura too. Super solid, right? Super solid. The weakness for Alaz, I think, is in Arena, um, you can get locked out. That's a bit of a problem. And then you have to switch to Form 2. And I'm, I'm not... Form 2, I think, is one of the coolest... Well, it's one of the coolest almost looking skins in the game. The problem is... If you've seen him in game in a battle, he's too small. <laughs> he looks like he's a giant, right? He looks like a giant, but he's like a normal sized dude. It's just like a really thick, stocky, normal sized dude. Like he needs to be at least 50% taller. Like he should be a giant and he's not. So that's a pro that's a mark against him right there. But I do find his form too is just not as not as useful. Uh, so that makes me not be able to put him up into S tier for me personally. But yeah, like he he, you know, he does a bit more. Um he makes fear and true fear stronger while also under HP burn. Like that's very, very niche. Uh, he can fully restore destroyed max HP and heal, puts out strength and increased resist. Like it's a good heal. He has an AOE burn, can't be resisted by enemies under stone skin and activates them and puts out true fear. His A1 extra hit on enemies under burn. He's a little bit clunky. Um, He'd be a lot better if this was his form one, you know? If this was his form one, he'd come into arena and be like, ah, oh, they're under stone skin. Cool, right, great. They're under stone skin. Put on the burn, activate it, bam, we blow up their stone skin, fear them, they miss their turn, great, form two, I switch over into this form, and I can just nuke them, or I can put up block damage, I can just blow them away. Sort of the problem is, you come in, and if the enemy is under stone skin, like, yeah, you can swap to form two and rip it off, but then you're kind of stuck, <laughs> he's probably your main damage, and you're kind of stuck going, well, I'm in form one, and it doesn't, you know, he's more of a support, right? Yeah, I can rip off stone skin, but then I'm sort of waiting to go back into form two. Um, and that's kind of a bummer. Or again, if you get locked out, if you're relying on his form one, and you get locked out, you've got to switch to form two and it's not as good. So yeah, that's the mark for me against Alaz, but he's, he's like his form one is obnoxiously strong, really. It's absolutely insane. So if you wanted to put him into S tier, I wouldn't fight you. Uh, let me put it like that. Um, do I put anyone else? Gizmak, maybe. Yeah, I think so. I, th I think Gizmak may be here. Again, I'm, I did a showcase of this guy. I actually did record, I might try to find it. I did do a showcase of Alaz in Hydra. And by the way, um, I didn't publish it. What I found was for my testing, funny enough, I did two runs with Alaz. In one of the runs, we strategically swapped into form two to like restore destroyed max HP, to get burns on enemies, that sort of stuff. 
and then we'd swap back into form one for the damage. We did that for one run. For the second run, I just left him in form one the whole time. And he did better in the run where we left him in form one. So it's kind of gone like, wow, okay, form two for Hydra. The, the opportunity cost is so high losing form one. It's not... Anyway, Gizmak the Terrible. I think this guy is actually similar to Alaz, but but he's got the better setup. So in form one, he puts out burn on everybody. Great, it can't be resisted. And then he can boost up the team. He buffs up your team a lot. And then bam, he can activate the burns. Great, and it, none of it can be resisted, which is fantastic. Uh, and then he also increases debuffs on enemies, puts out decreased speed. His A1 does some fun stuff too. I think the main thing he does is he's constantly putting out burns with his passive. The first time in the fight he does this, it's a two-turn burn on everyone. After that, it's more random. But he's giving you, I think importantly, giving you increased speed, decreased speed. This is what the new fusion does, right? This April fusion. Uh, the, the Sylvan Watcher girl, I can't remember her name. The Easter girl. Um... Increase speed, decrease speed is really powerful, but he's also extending uh, burns before he does it, so you don't lose uptime on the burns. And then he also extends all debuffs anyway. I think it's really strong, and he's giving you more crit rate, crit damage as well. He's very, very strong for Hydra in this Form 1, just boosting you up, yeah, extending all their debuffs, procking all the burns. He's very strong. It's actually much more consistent because of the debuff extension. He's much more consistent at keeping on burns than it reads on paper. He's actually very, very good burner for Hydra. So he's super good for Hydra. And again, we go into Arena and this could be a problem, right? This burn, he could he's very vulnerable to Polymorph, right? He can get Polymorph straight away and you're screwed and there's nothing you can do about it. But he can be a very good answer to Stone Skin, right? Because if they're in Stone Skin, okay, we come in turn one. Well, great. We'll buff up our team and then we'll activate this stuff. Or if we're in six piece Stone Skin, you could just activate it and knock their Stone Skin off. You're probably going to buff up your team and then rip off their Stone Skin. And then he's always a threat to swap into form two, which is the big damage form. So in form two, um, this is his big nuke that puts out decreased defense. So again, polymorph's a problem. Extra hit on enemies under burn. So that's a bit situational. An extra turn if he kills an enemy. So it's situational. It's vulnerable to Polymorph. And he's relying on the burns being out there. But if they are, and his Form 1's good at that, this absolutely claps. This hits so hard. Uh, and then he could do a Pain Link on a, a, an enemy, gives himself unkillable and taunt, which again is very good. And uh, yeah, his A1 can AoE. His passive is great as well. He just by default ignores 15% defense. Great. But if he or his target are less than 50% HP, he ignores 25% defense. So you give him like Savage and you give him... Um, yeah, you give him Savage set, and he's, no he's ignoring 50%. Proc Helm Smasher, he's going to do an absolute truckload of damage. Uh, it's very good, and again, because he does the Pain Link and the Taunt, the Taunt Unkillable, very nice, very easy for him to drop low on life and to start hitting really hard. So he's a big damage threat in this form. What do people think of him? Yeah, pretty pretty good. I, I think he's very solid. Um, I'm not sure if he goes into S tier. My concern is mostly the Polymorph stuff. What's his aura, actually? Yeah, crit rate in all battles, 27%. Like, that's a bit awkward, to be honest. That's kind of awkward to use. Um, crit rate auras, very powerful if you build around them, but you need to. I put them at the top of A tier. Again, these A tier champs are all really strong. I, you're super hyped if you pull any of these mythicals, right? But then we've got the S tier. I think these are the best of the best. Like, just really crazy. I'm going to put Lady Makage up. Um, I think Lady Makage is not like supercharged op like some of the others but she's just really solid in both forms form one ally attack really good combo with shadowkin for more ally attacks a1 and then all this buff manipulation on her a2 which is again really really good and then a nice little cleanse for your uh, attack nuker on her passive which is great as well crazy base speed really solid form one Great for particularly PvE content. And then Form 2, really good for Arena or Wave-based content. Again, crazy base speed. Got a great uh, passive pushing back um, their uh, attack nuker. Consistently is turn meter. She's got an AoE stun with a lot of turn meter pushback on a short cooldown. You've got a buff strip as well. A1 sleep uh, with turn meter pushback too. Really, really solid control champion. Yeah, I feel like she's not like a supercharged. Like this is the thing, right? Lady Makage... I don't think either form is like anywhere really near as strong as Alaz's form one. Like his form one is crazy. But in comparison, and the reason I'm putting her higher here is I think both of her forms are really good. We'll see. Again, we might come back to this tier list in a while and Lady Mikage could be top of S, uh, top of A, and these guys could have moved up to S. I think that's very possible. But this is where I'm putting it for now. She's definitely for me the bottom of S. 
Just two very useful forms. Not often, I'll say, that you necessarily use them both. Uh, you would use them both in Arena a bit. Um, but yeah, I think she's a really solid champion. Very powerful. Um, mm, then it becomes tough. Like, these are the definite S tiers right here. Uh, you, know, you know what? Let's actually put Mikage at the top of A. I think maybe that's more accurate because she's really strong. Like, really strong. But let's be honest. The, these ones are a lot scarier. <laughs> Let's be honest. They are, they are a lot, lot scarier. This becomes tough now to rank them. Let's just put the, let's just put them in and then we'll think about it. Uh, Star Sage Galathea, let's talk about him first. The High Elf, really strong guy, really, really powerful. Uh, in his Form 1, he's getting damage reduction, which is nice. You're going to be building him with high resistance, so he's high resist, damage reduction. He has an AoE revive with Perfect Veil on the team. He's got a cleanse and a heal with turn meter boost and block debuffs. His A1 is turn meter boosting. He's a solid form one. Then in form two, and by the way, crazy base speed as well. In form two, he comes in, he turns his resistance into accuracy, which is really powerful. Um, he can reflect some debuffs back, which is nice. But he's got, again, double crowd control. Increase accuracy, AOE decrease resist, and AOE stun. So four turn, AOE stun. Eclipse Ren then is AOE buff strip with block active skills for two turns on a three turn. That doesn't trigger counter attacks. It's A1 then is AOE turn meter pushback. It's very powerful, right? We come in, if we don't need that increased accuracy, especially, we can come in and we can just AOE block active skills. You know, then maybe the next turn we do an A1, then we AOE stun them, then we're back to an AOE with block active skills. The, the lockout potential is crazy. It's really strong. And then again, he can swap back to form one and be a reviver as well, or your cleanser healer. I think he's got a lot going on. It's a very supercharged kit. I think it's very useful in a lot of different areas. Yeah, I, I think he's very, very powerful. So I'm putting him S tier for sure. Um, next up, Crixia. We'll rearrange these as we go. Let's let's break them down first. Crixia, uh, lockout and reset champion, right? So form one, buff strip and lockout. Great. You also can do decrease resist, decrease turn meter, decrease resist, block buffs. That's okay. Not too bad. Um, immune to stun as well. And she gets more accuracy for resistance. So you can double build. Resistance aura too, by the way. Very nice. Form two swaps over. Immune to sleep. Gets speed now from resistance. And she's got a team reset, right? Cleanses the team and resets their cooldowns. Then has an AOE block debuffs and increase resist on allies and turn meter boost. A1 does some stuff. She's very solid, right? Two very good forms. Like you bring her into arena and stone skin and you're kind of going like, cool, great. If we go first, we can strip you and lock you out. Downside of this one is her affinity can affect things. And obviously stone skin can block the... Can't, stone skin can't block the cooldown increase, but it can block the buff strip. But yeah, affinity is sort of her only problem. But yeah, strip them, increase their cooldowns. If they go first, if they lock you out, no problem. Switch over and reset. It's just very, very difficult, right? Like, if they lock you out on the first turn with the Crixia, and then they nuke, you know, they, they nuke you to death, then she swaps over and resets the nukers. It's, it's kind of horrible. She's very powerful and obviously very useful anywhere in the game, really. You know, the reset is just going to be strong in general. She can be a solid reset champion for it. It's basically a Yumiko reset, really, right, with a cleanse as well. So anything that Yumiko can do with resetting you in PvE, Night Queen Crixia can do Yumiko's job, basically. So very, very good. The only thing she misses is, like, the Hex for Yumiko, which is pretty good for, let's say, hard modes. Dragon, you can reflect all the debuffs back at Yumiko, that sort of thing, or most of them. Um, Seekfront. And Lazarius. Let's do Lazarius first, and then Siegfried is technically sort of the newest one, right? Because <laughs> he was buffed in a way. Lazarius is insane. This guy's got so much going on. So much going on. 25% speed in all battles aura. Yes, please. In his form one, he's actually a reviver, which is crazy. At the end of his turn, revive a random ally with half HP turn meter and perfect veil. It has a three turn cooldown, but that's a that's amazing, right? <laughs> that's so strong. That's, that's a really, really good single target revive or very solid one on a three turn. And it just happens passively. It's so good. He also gets perfect fail and increased accuracy on himself. And he takes less damage on his passive. His passive is mega overloaded. His uh, A3 is turn meter boost and turn meter pushback with increased attack and strengthen for your team. His A2 is uh, probably more the one that's more used. Nest of Vipers is an AoE, puts block debuffs on his team, and decreases enemy buffs by two turns. So you can strip off stone skin or defensive buffs or whatever, um, and then put out block buffs on enemies. You don't you do not trigger polymorph 
from decreasing their buffs. So that's really good. He's like the best buff stripper in the game practically for Arena because of that. And then the block buffs, yes, you can get polymorphed off of that. But if you roll that dice, if you get through it, you're good. I think his A1 is even okay, gives you a bit of a shield. So he's like a support that you build with attack and he's defensively strong. Even by building attack, he's still strong defensively, which is crazy. And you can swap over to form two, which is nuts. Form two, passively, at the start of his turn, every turn, gives himself increased attack and crit damage. So this is so scary. He's a self-buffing nuker that does it on his passive, which is nuts. Whenever he kills an enemy, he locks him out for two turns as well, which is super, super strong. Um, his A2 is a massive AoE, ignore shield and increase defense. Cleanses him and it does 15% more damage for each debuff removed. If he doesn't have any debuffs, right? He does 15% more damage for each ally alive instead. This thing hits like an absolute truck. His A2 is a double hitter that can steal turn meter. Uh, his A1 even is a double hitter that hits pretty hard as well and does some like permanent scaling stuff. Very strong. I think he's busted, right? I think this guy's insane. Very, very solid support in form one. Sneakily good support in form one with a lot of different effects and then a crazy terrifying nuker in form two. Um, he's got a lot going on. I think Lazarius is, is really strong. Very scary. And then Siegfried, the Nephilim. Uh, he's coming in as well to the S tier. It's going to be so hard to rank these in the S tier. But Seek Friend, I'm putting him as S tier now after his buff. His A3 just absolutely clapped. It's a massive single target nuke. That Also a massive AoE nuke afterwards. This is crazy on a three turn. Then he has a three turn AoE as well that fills his turn meter and resets his A3 if he kills anybody. Yeah, resets all of his skills if he kills two or more enemies. That's quite nice. His A1 is decent too. And then if he's about to be killed, he gets block damage for two turns, which is great and gives him a turn straight away. Very strong form one now. This, uh, they boosted his damage up and they absolutely shot the damage on his A3 through the roof. He's he's a monster. Then he can go into form two and he's got one of the best revives in the game. A we revive with block damage on your whole team for two turns. This got mega buffed. It used to be, I think, for one turn and it used to not go on him. Now it goes on him as well. He just block damage on his entire team for two turns. It's the best. I think it's the best A we revive in the game. Yeah, I think so. It's It's kind of nuts. Uh, he also has a full cleanse with a heal and block debuffs, of course, and then an A1 that does some healing. Uh, he takes a bit less damage on his passive too to help him survive a bit because he's not going to be very tanky. Um, but yeah, he's just, he's very, very powerful, I think. Uh, the downside, I suppose, is his, um, yeah, his, his metamorph is is a passive effect, right? Some people hate this. I actually don't have a problem with it. Like, I'll, I'll, I want to be on record saying I have no problem with passive metamorphs. Like, for me, personally, I think all the metamorphs being like active skills with a four turn cooldown, it's kind of boring. I actually think it's cool that we have something unique. I think it's a pity that people are so against it. I think passive metamorphs are pretty cool. I'd like to see more mythicals with passive metamorphs. I think I think it's interesting. I like a bit of variety. Do me. I do. But yeah, he's a, a monster now. He's very strong. So there we go. That's how the tier list is looking. Am I happy with this? Yes, I, th I think so. I think so. Um... I think both of these champions are just pretty underwhelming. I think uh, I think she's just solid. She's solid, but not OP. She's just solid. B tier, I think, is fine. Androk is like very. He's like, he's powerful, but it's just not a very useful form of power. I think generally, like I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm split on Androk. Not sure about Carnage. Like I said, he looks to hit like really hard. So I'm putting him A tier. Uh, all of these are very very solid champions. Uh, with some drawbacks like Alaz and Garol, really strong in one of their forms, but kind of weaker in the other one. Um, yeah, but they're all really strong. All these A tier mythicals are nuts. And then the S tier are like, oh my god, these are so OP. Like, it's just, when these get picked against you in Arena, you're like, what What do I even do, right? <laughs> what do I even do to deal with this nonsense? It's very difficult to fight fight against them and so on. So yeah, that's how I'm ranking the mythicals. Let me know how you would rank them. Do you agree or disagree? Uh, obviously, I put most in A and S, and I think that's obviously where they should be. Uh, I think some B tiers are okay as well. Um, like I said, I, I mix about Androk. I think I think Mesomel is fine, though. I, I I think that's fine, but I think you generally want your mythicals to be pretty darn powerful, right? They're so hard to get. Um, you know, it should be a big deal when you pull them. And I, I do feel kind of bad for anyone that gets Fralny or Aphidus, like especially if you go like 200 Primal Shards. Imagine going 200 Primal Shards, hitting Mercy, and you get like Frawling or Aphidus, and then you go another 200 shards, and you get Frawling or Aphidus again. Like that's just depressing, you know. Compared to you might have a friend that pull like 
Galath like probably the, the lizard and Crixia. Like it's probably, I don't know. Probably something like this, maybe. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But imagine they get the lizard and Crixia and you've got these two instead. The difference is just nuts, right? I, let's let's be honest. This this S tier could be in any sort of order. I don't know what order it should be in. Um, but yeah, look, that's how it's going. Thanks for watching, everyone. Let me know what you think. Good luck with your pulls, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.